It's not a. It's not an average hope. It's a, it's not just above average. It's a good hope, an anticipation of, of what Christ has accomplished for us. Uh, give it just a second here. We just went live, and so uh, I just felt like last night, uh, and maybe it's because I needed a little encouragement, uh, but I felt like that he. That the, I felt the Lord speak to my heart that he wanted just to encourage us in himself today. Encourage us in, in the reality of this mystical union we, we call the body of Christ. And he wants us to be, he wants us to be uh, reassured and refreshed in our, uh, in our life with him and in him. And he in us. Um, and so uh, I did want to mention, I've got a few people already uh, logged on here so um, we want to mention that next week we won't or if you, does everybody have a calendar yes. okay we won't have a service next week because we're bumped by the hotel just wanted to make remind everybody that may be watching and there's always if you go to our, our Facebook page you can see the calendar I think Ann is trying to keep it kind of at the top of the page for those that can be reminded every time they click yeah. on there so uh, and uh I don't know of any other any other uh, things we need to mention as far as announcements. Or, uh, okay, uh, the title of today's message is, is the mystery. Which I, I as I got to looking at this, I, I didn't realize how much the Apostle Paul used this expression. Uh, it's one of his favorite things, especially in the letter to the Ephesian church. Uh, and if you've heard me uh, talk for, and I and I was going through all the notes last night trying to get down to copy the page to put us a picture on this one and I realized there's a lot of I've been, I've been you know, saying a lot of things over the years and, uh, but uh, my, my hope and my <coughs> prayer is that all of them have been in, in lifting up Jesus and his finished work the, the word of his grace because I want people mm -hmm. to experience that edification mm -hmm. and that inheritance that only comes because of the gospel That's right. the gospel is the power of God unto mm -hmm. salvation Amen. Uh, because in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And we can't allow it to go from faith to works, can we? No. We've got to keep it from faith to faith. Our faith is in confidence is in Him and what He did, not in what we do. Amen. Uh, and that that mystery is uh, this mystery that that uh, the Apostle Paul got a tremendous revelation on. Uh, caused him to have such a desire to leave this realm. He said, I'm here because I need to be here for your sakes, but if I had a choice, I'd rather go on. And so there was a revelation in, in his heart of this union, uh, this, this mystery of Christ in the church, this bride and bridegroom, this relationship that he was in uh, that had him longing to be with the bridegroom. And uh, I think that the, the more we can be reassured of this this mystery, the more we have, would have the same desire and same assurance in our hearts. Amen. Um, if you would turn to Genesis chapter two this morning, some things that I was looking at last night that I thought was kind of strange the way they're put in here. Unless you really see what Paul saw, uh, this is a mystery. The mystery of uh, godliness. The mystery of our relationship as the, the body and the bride of Christ uh, was established from when? Now, how long ago? The foundation, the foundation of the world. So it doesn't surprise me that as strange as it, as it is that this, would, that this would begin to pop up right, right in the beginning of Scripture. And the Apostle Paul knew this. He, he, he saw... What was, what was being illustrated in all the way back in the beginning, what God's heart was for us uh, to be in this union with him. Uh, and so in Genesis chapter 2, we have, you know, chapter 1 and 2, we have the creation. Uh, God made all the, you know, the, made the earth and he uh, divided the day and made all the animals and and he looked at it after the end of the fifth day. So he looked and he said it was. He said they were, that it was good. And then on the sixth day he made man. And then he said it's very, very good. good. But it was just still very good. It wasn't. Per, it wasn't perfect yet. And you couldn't have a. You can't have a perfect a perfect 
uh, perfection apart from uh, fulfilling the, the, the reason why he brought, the, brought, brought man into this earth, and that was for, for, him, for him to have a family. He, he brought mankind onto this planet because he wanted a bride for his son and he wanted a family uh, to live forever. And this is what the angels look into with, with amazement because this wasn't their, this wasn't the reason for their creation. They're, they were uh, to, to help in those that were going to inherit eternal life. That's what their, their ministry was. But, uh, and thank God for the angelic realm that's, that's surrounding us at, at all times and helping us, uh, putting us in places where we get further and further uh, edified in this, uh, in this gospel, this truth. But here in Genesis, he, he gets, he, they tell the story of creation, then they kind of start over uh, about the, the family. Uh, and, and so in verse uh, 23, let's, let's look at 23. Oh, let's go back to 20, 21. And the Lord God uh, caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and, and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Now, all of a sudden, the next verse, and this is the question in your notes, based on the next verse, what's the prophetic, what is this a prophetic picture of? Uh, Verse 24, therefore a man shall leave his father, and that, was there any fathers and mothers in, on, on the earth at that time? <laughs> they just, he just made Adam and Eve, and he just pulled Eve out of Adam. Mm -hmm. So this wedding verse seems totally out of place unless you see the mystery. Mm -hmm. When you begin to see the mystery, this will start to make sense. Because you'll see, just like the Apostle Paul saw, where he was going with this. Uh, and this, this is where Paul, the Apostle Paul, started his Ephesian letter, in the, because you'll see why in just a few minutes. This is the, the mystery that he got a vision of. Uh, so, uh, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become, I, I'm, I, I don't know why I'm feeling emotional, one flesh. They shall become one flesh. Now, they were two people, so see, he, he took her out of him. He was taken, she was taken out of him. So when she was brought before him, what he basically said, I looked at a lot of different translations, is what he said, he said this, she is exactly like me. She's exactly like me. Wow. She's part of me. She came out of me. Uh, and see, God had just said that there was no helper comparable to him. He had all the creation, but he didn't have uh, this out, this this something that was taken out of him that would cause him to see who he was. Okay. This is the beginning of the mystery, and you'll see that subsequently, man, uh, she uh, she was deceived, and he chose uh, to go along with her uh, in 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 this fall, the, the fall of Adam. But almost immediately. Uh, God intervened by saying, now the, the, there's this woman, that, he's, the, her seed is coming to bring a reversal and bring a fulfillment of what's starting right here in this process. So I just wanted you to see this because this is, a, this is the physical, this is the natural, so Paul, Paul says first the natural, then the spiritual, right? So we're going to go along, we're going to go based upon this because he wants, you, he wants us to, to see this mystery that's been fulfilled in Christ. And, and, and so keep that thought about this verse and also what, what Adam said about his wife. Uh, now, when a, when, a, when a wife is, you know, a husband and a wife, what causes them to be joined together is what? It's a realization of their, their likeness, and they're, they're, the fact that when they, as, they are, as they get a greater and greater revelation of one another, it begins to cause a perfection of both, of, 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 and a realization from both sides, right? Uh, that's what it causes. Even, even though they're, uh, 
the one flesh relationship is is it can you know there's a physical part of that but it's it's the realization of much much greater much deeper than that it's a it's a realization of purpose and destiny and and likeness uh, and, compa and, and and a comparable help to one another uh, and that relationship that grows out of that is what God is interested in uh, in in the natural and the spiritual we're going to see that coming up now let's go to John. Uh, John chapter 19. First the natural, then the spiritual. I want you, the Lord, your Father wants you to be, uh, he, he just, he wants you to be reassured this morning. He wants to reassure you of his, uh, of, of their plan. It's, it said, you know, in fact, I, I didn't say it, but I'm going to back up there just for a second. Uh, verse Chapter 1, verse 26 of Genesis. Then God said, let us, let us make man. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, let me make man. Mm -hmm. It says us, capital U, S. Well, in the first recognition in, of the, the Trinity. In the Hebrew, it's Elohim, and if anything ends in I am, it's plural. Exactly. So this is the first reference to the Trinity right there in the first chapter mm -hmm. of Genesis. I, I, I mean, I... I love I love to study the scriptures. I love to see all these things and what what you know this this has been a this has been a Father Son Holy Spirit uh, desire and and, and uh, impact from the Word that was started in the beginning and it was a corporate action and act, mm -hmm. and, and activity. It wasn't uh, it wasn't one or the other trying to be on our side and one one or the other being against us as we've been told. In the John chapter 19, not Colossians, get over to John, John chapter 19, I'm going there, uh, John 9, chapter 19 and verse uh, 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, that was to break all the generational curses, by the way, uh, yeah, I, could, I, could, I could get off on a rabbit trail there, but thank God I'm not going to do that this morning. So when, when Jesus had received the sour, he said, everybody say, it is finished. Is finished. <laughs> and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Now, uh, I want you to see some similarities here. Now, when Adam, when, when, he, when he pulled Eve out of Adam, where was he? He was asleep. He was asleep. Right? Mm -hmm. He put God in, he put, he put Adam asleep and pulled out of him, her. You begin to see the you begin to see the reality here of the spirit side of this. Uh, he gave up his spirit. He went to sleep. He went into he went into the, the sleep of death. Uh, uh, and then if you go down uh, to verse thirty four, but one of the soldiers they were going to break his bones. But prophetically it says not one of his bones shall be broken. Um, and. Uh, so he was already dead. They didn't break his legs. Why did they break their legs again? So they couldn't breathe. Couldn't push up with their legs and get another breath. They would, they would strangle them, choke them, and cause them not to be able to breathe and, and expire quick, more quickly. Uh, but the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And th this was the beginning of the church. He was asleep, and again, it wasn't it wasn't a natural physical rib, but out of his side, just like with Adam and the first Adam, uh, the birth of the church was because of the blood and the water, mm -hmm. the blood of his redemptive work and, and the Holy Spirit that was coming as a result uh, of of his uh, uh, the church coming out of himself because he took our place, and we're going to see that here in just a minute. Okay, so, is it the, so does that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Going back to the first? Okay. Uh, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Remember when uh, Adam and Eve fell uh, and so that they wouldn't eat of the tree of life and live forever in a condition of condemnation which was a blessing from God's side he didn't want mankind to live in a perpetual state of, of condemnation and shame and fear and, 
So he, he removed them and he put a, a sword uh, that kept the, 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 uh, kept the pathway back to the tree of life blocked from mankind until a certain time. Uh, and this time was what was hap what happened at the cross. Uh, if you go back and read in Zechariah, it says, the, 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 uh, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. He fell on that sword. He, he allowed that sword that was blocking our pathway to the tree of life. He took that sword within himself so he could remove the condemnation, the shame, the bitterness, and take it all of himself, put it away, so we could now have an eternal life or a, a perpetual life eating from the tree of life without living in a, in a, a dead, dead spiritually and condemned and separated from God. Everybody see that? So uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, uh, it says, uh, And so it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became what? A life-giving spirit. Life spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural and afterward the spiritual. Uh, the first man uh, was of the earth, made of dust. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As it was the man of dust, so are those that are, are uh, made of dust. We were all we all came from a natural. You can't become a son of God without having experienced life through the first Adam. You, you, you had to. You had to. We had to be born here. And Jesus said, we'll see that in a minute. I don't want to get ahead of myself. So, uh, and as it is in the heavenly man, so are those who are heavenly. So he's making, he's drawing those two, those two stories that I was showing you together. Uh, each, each produced after its time. First there was a natural, and then Jesus came to bring us into the spiritual life. Uh, and, and as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also... Uh, the image of the heavenly man. Uh, now I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does corruption inherit incorruption. And then he talks about another mystery. I like this. He's going. He tells about a mystery, which is about the rapture, the the, the rapture of the church. And then he talks about uh, the mystery, and then he talks about the the great mystery. And I'm going to we're going to go in that order here in just a second here. So everybody with me? Uh, so how does verse 49? give greater revelation to Genesis 2.23, which we just, we, we just read. Uh, as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly man. Oh. Mm -hmm. So as we're taking, as we come out of his side, spiritually we become uh, an offspring of, of, of the heavenly by being born again. Uh, Jesus said in one of the verses there, I'm just going to, I'll just read it to you, John, John chapter 3. Uh, chapter 3 verse 6 and 7 it says uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. that which is born of the spirit is spirit. so he said do not marvel that I said to you and he's talking to Nicodemus you must be born okay. again so uh, being born again is being born spiritually after the spirit man but it's the same process we came out of his side uh, and so uh, as we bore the image, just like when Adam, when woman came up, you know, I, I, I love my wife, and, and, and uh, but the recognition of, of that completion, because she's the same as me, see, uh, is a recognition that he, wanted, he wants us to have naturally, but also spiritually. spiritually. When you were born again, you're the same as he. You're exactly you're, you're exactly the same as he is, and that's what he that's what he wants everybody in this room to understand this mystery that Paul Paul uh, received. Uh, now let's go to Ephesians three. Ephesians chapter three. Uh, I see Mary. I think yeah, hot Mary and Todd are watching and. I know there's not any uh, Kansas City fans up that way. <laughs> I'd like to ask her about if there was a white sheet. I, I, I had met somebody this week that was from, I, I call it Missouri, but they say Missouri. 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 
I don't know if that's what Mary and Todd say. So I said, how do you spell that? <laughs> I don't see an A at the end of that word, but okay, well, we're, we're kind of, we have our own quirks in Texas too, so. Uh, never, never, never in Texas, okay. Uh, anyway, we hope we're, we have a, there's a kid from, from East Texas from White House that played high school football up there, and he's the quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, so. Kind of, Mary said, "Go Chiefs." So I just said, "Go Chiefs." All right. Well, that's why we're we're rooting for that East Texas kid that's that's right. It's playing quarterback for the Chiefs this that's afternoon. Right. So uh, anyway, that's not a mystery, is it? <laughs> she said she says Missouri with an E sound. Oh, with an E sound, Missouri. Yep. Okay. All right. Well, I I, I was I was arguing with this week. It's Missouri. I said, "Okay." Each is on, but <laughs> Maybe anyway, she's that's at heart. <laughs> but that's an unrealized mystery yet. Right? That's a mystery yet to be revealed this afternoon, right? <laughs> but we we know one that has been revealed, and so I'll get I'll get back to this one. <laughs> Ephesians chapter three is a revelation of the mystery of the church. In fact, if you have the open Bible, right under the chapter three, does it does anybody have that written? Where it says it says revelation of the mystery of the church. I'm telling you, Paul had a, he had a tremendous revelation of this mystery. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you go to uh, verse 6, it says, uh, let, let's go back and see. Uh, let's go to verse 3. How, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. As I've already briefly written and written to you already, and if you go back and read the first couple of chapters of Ephesians, Ephesians again could have as its title, and in fact, I think I wrote it in my uh, uh, over the chapter over Ephesians. You could just write spiritual inheritance, spiritual inheritance. Uh, By which, when you when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow uh, heirs of the same body and partakers of of his promise in Christ through the gospel, and that promise is the, is the spirit, is the blessing of Abraham, that we can receive the spirit by faith, the Holy Spirit. Uh, but we are we're fellow heirs of the same body, and he became a minister according to the gift of great, the grace of God given to him. Amen? Uh, then uh, it says, but notice in verse 6 that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, common. And then it says, and then what does it say next? Of the, of the same body. We are his body. We are heirs, but we're also, it doesn't, if you don't put a comma there, it could say heirs of his body, but it's heirs, yeah. and then comma, of his body, and then, uh, and partakers of his promise. The promise of the Father was that we could receive the Holy Spirit, and that happened on the day of Pentecost. Amen? And for the Gentiles, it happened when Peter was preaching to them and shared the gospel, and then the Spirit embraced them, fell on them, embraced them, filled them, changed them, made them new creations in Christ. Because that was the promise that the, that the Son inherited by coming down and, and falling on that sword. Everybody with me? Uh, verse 9, what is the fellowship? Let's look at this. And to make all see what is the fellowship of the mystery, uh, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. Uh, so in verse 9, what is, what is the fellowship of, of the mystery? Anybody want to comment on that? It's dispensation. Is it now, what? Because of the cross, we can become bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, and one spirit with him. Amen. Paul said in another place in Corinthians that we are, 
those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit with him. One spirit. Uh, so he, that, that's the mystery that started back in Genesis. Uh, and, and, and this is the mystery that Paul, the Apostle Paul, is getting, getting tremendous revelation of. And this was according to the eternal purpose, uh, verse 11, uh, that he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, uh, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through faith in him. See, we, we have boldness and access now uh, because of this uh, eternal purpose that, that it was accomplished in Christ. See, it was accomplished. In fact, when it, another way of saying it is finished in some translations, it actually says that. It is accomplished. It's, it's a, or we say in Texas, it's a done deal. Right? It's a done deal. It was done, not by us, but by him. Okay? So uh, that's the fellowship that we have uh, of that mystery. The dispensation is now, it's not about something that's no longer hidden. It's revealed by the gospel. And now we can fellowship in the truth and that reality that because of the power of the gospel and because of the promise of the Spirit that, that, that recreates us, that, that now we become participants as members of the body of Christ, of his, of his offspring, of his children, uh, and have boldness and access because of our place in Christ. We are, we are formed out of his side, just like the first Adam, Eve, was taken out. We were taken out of his side, out of Jesus' side, and became just like him, exactly like him. In fact, we are a complement to him the same way the first woman was a complement to Adam. He was a complement. It's a complementary position that we complement each other. Uh, and we're going to see it more about that word complement here in just a second. All right, Ephesians chapter, let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. There's all kinds of... Paul prays, the next thing he does is pray for a realization, and I just pray that. Lord, give us a realization mm -hmm. of this mystery. Amen. Amen. Give us, a, re give us a, real, a realization of this mystery of just how uh, intimate and, and glorious this mystery, yes, amen, this mystical mm -hmm. union is. I believe she's saying amen. I believe her spirit is hearing uh, what, we're, yeah. what we're talking about this morning. Amen. Uh, because it is, it's, it resonates. It's, it's not a. This is not about flesh and blood. This is about. This is about the spirit uh, that bears witness with our spirit. Amen. Uh, now, Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians chapter five. I always taught this back in the you know days when I was. You know, there's a lot of good uh, marriage uh, seminars that came out of this chapter without realizing they weren't married. This wasn't about us. <laughs> Part of it was, but most of it wasn't. And so we've tried to come up and. and embrace and do these things uh, that, that are talked about here in Ephesians 5 without a, realiz without a realization of the mystery and what Paul is trying to show us here. Okay, uh, Ephesians 5, starting in verse 25, describes the relationship of Christ, the, of, of the church to Christ. It, 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 it describes that relationship. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also, as our husband, loved us and gave himself for her, which is us, the bride. That's, that's, this is the mystery uh, about this relationship. And if you have, if you do, I just want to, you know, if you do have the open Bible, and I hope some of you do, how many have the open Bible? Uh, one, two, three. Look over to your left. You'll see a, a De Deborah has one, but not here. She's, I'll let her read mine sometime. <laughs> I've got a lot. I have a large letter version at home that I'm that I'm trying to. Kay bought. Kay got for me uh, when they were running out. They don't, this is not in print anymore. But I have one that's new. But I don't want to try and change over. I can still read this barely, but um, but it's got all my notes in it. So I like the bigger letters in the new one, but it doesn't have my letters on the, in the margins. Right. So it's a little hard to go. But, but there's, a, there's a whole section there. Is that in yours called the relationship of the church to Christ? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me just read a couple of them. The shepherd and the sheep, this is what Deborah was talking about this morning. It's about, that's the relationship of, of church, the church to Christ. The shepherd and the sheep. He's the shepherd with the sheep. The vine and the branches. Christ is high priest and the church is the kingdom of priests. See that? Uh, the cornerstone and the, and the, and the uh, living stones. The, 
but he's the cornerstone we're being built into a spiritual house. Amen? Uh, the head and the many membered body. He's the head and we're the members of the body. Uh, all of this is part of that mystery. Amen? The last Adam and the new creation presents Christ as the uh, initiator of a new covenant of believers as Adam was of the old creation. Uh, and then the last one is the bridegroom and the bride. Uh, so th this, this mystery was just so compound, so com so wonderfully revealed to the Apostle Paul, and he wants us to, and he wants y'all to be re refreshed and have a greater revelation today of this of this union, this mystical mm -hmm. union we have. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 so in twenty five, and he talks about that he Jesus might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, and that word word there is actually the word rhema. Uh, so rhema is is Jesus is the Word. He is the actual uh, Logos. And the Holy Spirit's translating the Logos into Rhema. He's translating who Jesus is into the reason why He is what He is to our hearts, what it makes, what it, what it says concerning us. Everybody with me on that? And so uh, that, sanct that sanctify, uh, uh, that is the word hagiazo, which means to purify, to, re, to uh, uh, cleanse eternally, uh, purified by uh, expiation, free from the guilt of sin. Oh, some of y'all wrote this in your, in your I, I can't, or I can hardly read it anymore, but uh, from the, 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 the guilt of sin uh, and by the renewing of the soul. That's what the word, that hagiazo, that word sanctified. So he's, he's standing in front of us, declaring to us who we are because we're just like him. And he's trying to cause that sanctification and that realization, that revelation to come to us uh, of what he has done to make us who we are. He's reminding us of what he's done to make us who we are, not what we're trying to become. Amen. Who we are. Amen. This is the last Adam standing in front of the last Eve, the last woman. The Bible talks about the woman in, in, in the prophecy. What is he talking about? The church. The church. Um, and so he's speaking to us the same way that Adam said, she's just like me. She is just, she's, she's, out, of, she's out of me and exactly of me and, and, and just like me. That's the way he cleanses us. That he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. That, see, he's presenting her to himself that way. By cleansing her and making her realize that she's been free from sin and shame and guilt. Mm -hmm. and, and by giving, renewing her mind to that realization. That's how he's, that's the love relationship uh, that, he's, that he's creating with her. Amen? Uh, and then he goes on uh, for we are members of his body look at verse 30 we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones now look at this verse 31 I wonder where he got this next verse anybody have a guess yeah. where Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 yep. for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh we are joined to the Lord as one flesh. We are in a one flesh, one spirit relationship with him. Um, and he is, uh, and when I say it again, being joined to, to someone is, 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 is stating and, and restating the truth of the, the likeness of, of, who, of, of each other and that they are the same person. They are the same likeness. Adam said, she's, she's just like me. Jesus is saying this morning, you're just like me. You are, his, you are bone of his bone. You're flesh of his flesh. You're one spirit with him. You've come out of his side, and you stand before him exactly the same as he is. First John. As he is. I, 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 when I looked at you, I thought, I, sometimes I, with, with Susan, I can sometimes read her mind because I know what verse is, is really planted in there. As he is, so are we in this world. 
Amen. Amen. See, he wants to thank you. He wants to sanctify you. He wants to hug the eyes of you today in that truth. He wants to. He wants to reassure you as you're standing before him, like it was in the natural, so it is in the spiritual, that you are sanctified. Amen. You're you're a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or anything Amen. that is defiled because he took that all away. Amen. Amen. He took it all away. Now this. Uh, the past, this passage beautifully emphasizes the the uh, the uh, intimate fellowship and co-ownership. I love that in that part G over there in that in that little little section. Uh, the bride and the, the bridegroom and the bride beautifully emphasizes the intimate fellowship and co-ownership. See, we have a co-ownership relationship with Jesus Christ. He owns us, and we own him. Everything he is, he's given to us. Amen. And everything we, everything he has, he's given to us. We have Amen. a complete, uh, and that's that's the ultimate goal of, you know, and even a natural marriage is co-ownership. Uh, and if it's not if it's not developed that way, but so here's here's the Apostle Paul's uh, one verse, which which is back to. The illustration is the reality of Christ in the church, and then he kind of goes and says, nevertheless, verse 33. Well, nevertheless, here's my quick natural uh, uh, addition to this for you. Let each one of you, uh, in particular, so love his own wife and, as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So he says, okay, here's, do the best you can with this, but don't let this be what you're trying to glean from this passage. Let this be a result of what you're gleaning in your relationship to Christ. Mm -hmm. Because what you glean in the reality of the mystery that Paul's trying to reveal is the degree to which you'll actually, this will yeah. trickle down to your natural relationship. Mm -hmm. Don't try to go the other way. Don't try to interpret this as a, as a marriage counseling uh, passage and begin to try to, to do these things. Realize the truth behind it and let that precipitate down to the natural, to the natural relationship. Now, the co-ownership existing between Christ and the church, and I put a couple examples. Song of Solomon says, I am my beloved's, and he is mine. Isn't that, isn't that a wonderful truth? Uh, and then uh, Revelation 21, uh, verse 9, uh, talks about the, uh, let me read it, just read it to you. Revelation 21, verse 9. Uh, then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked to me and saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And there's, there's a lot of verses we can go to where it, it reveals what she looked like. And she was all glorious within, without any spot. Holy, blameless before him, uh, as you stand before your your bridegroom this morning, mm -hmm. uh, uh, based on verses twenty six and twenty seven here, uh, how does Jesus sanctify and cleanse her? Let's let's look at one example, the last example, John chapter thirteen. Go back to John chapter thirteen. Kid, did your, your mom ever say, we need a bath? <laughs> well, I can tell you in all, in all truthfulness this morning, by the word of the Lord, that you do not need a bath Amen. if you're in Christ. Amen. You can't be cleaned up all, again and again and again. You're cleaned up once. And that's what he's trying to describe here. Uh, John chapter 13, verse 10. Uh, well, let us back up to seven. Jesus answered and said to him, what, am I, what, what I'm doing, you don't understand now, but you will know after this. So he's, he's, gonna, he's taking his divinity, laying aside his, his position to humble himself and wash their feet. Uh, 
but there's a lot more a lot more to it. In fact, that verse is, is fulfilled by the Apostle Paul in the, the revelation of the mystery. He said, you don't know this now, but you're going to understand what I'm doing here soon. So Jesus, uh, and Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. That sounds like Peter, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not just my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean, and you are clean. And then he talks about Judas, which that's not us. We're the bride. We're, and so I'm, he's making that declaration to you, and this is part of the washing of water with the word. He's sanctifying you this morning by declaring to you that, you, <laughs> that he's bathed you, he's cleaned you, and you are completely clean. So why the feet? What is he trying to tell us concerning our responsibility for one another in this verse 14? It says, for if, if I then, your Lord and, and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. Not to clean them up, but to remind them that they're clean and bathed. And even though they're walking in entanglements, in this natural realm, this natural world, it doesn't nullify or negate the reality of their, per their perfect cleansing that was done by him. Amen. The washing of water with the word, the Holy Spirit has perfect, perfectly cleansed you, mm -hmm. perfectly made you white, without, without spot, without blemish, uh, and, you, and you stand in a position of righteousness and holiness before him all, with, all throughout the rest of eternity. So what he's trying to illustrate here is, is as, our, as, the, as the, the bride and, hey, as the bride and the bridegroom, the reality of what he's doing by reminding the bride of, of who she is, of who you are, of who you are, exactly like him. Yes. In every way. Amen. The perfect, perfect uh, part of him that came out of his side. A perfect compliment as a bride to him as the groom. Uh, Isn't a yet, compliment a completion? A, com com a completion, yeah. Mm -hmm. And this was the ultimate, and that's where I was hit, finishing up. So she can, she can read my mind too. Uh, but that's, that's the completion of this mystery. And that's what, and when, you, when, you, when you go back and look at that in Ephesians, let's look at it one more time, Ephesians chapter 5. Yes. When you say wash your feet, are you you're referencing um, washing away condemnation or dust yes. off of our feet? Anything that makes you feel like you're defiled and no longer clean and no longer right with God. Anything that, that, that the enemy tries to use against you, oh well, look what happened last week. Look what happened on the way to church this morning. Yeah. You know, you're not, you're not. Yeah. And so it's 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 the voice of the bridegroom that's telling the bride, no, that's not the case. You are perfectly clean, in spite of your feet getting dirty. And I'm here to show you that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna illustrate what you need to do by doing it for you first. And that's telling you that you're clean because of what I've done. And even though your feet get a little dirty because you get back into the same condemnation and guilt and shame. And listening to the wrong voices and getting there, you're not hearing me speak anymore. You're not letting me continue to cleanse you. I'm going to remind you of that reality. When I was reading this, the thing that came to me was the dirt on your feet is what you pick up from the world. Exactly. By walking in the world. Walking in the world, you're naturally going to pick up some dust here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's what he's trying to say. So we, as the body, as his body, when we're talking to each other, uh, it's not to remind them of what they've done, but to remind them of what Christ has done. That's right. And that's what made you holy and righteous. And, 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 and that's why the enemy has no power. Amen. No power loser, ever. Unless we give it to him. Yeah, unless we give it to him. 
to him. And the only way we can give it to him is by acknowledging his lies in our life. And uh, go, go ahead. I was going to say that what back there at that chapter, that part in John 13 where he's talking about washing their feet, he said, Most assuredly I say to you, a servant is no greater than his master, nor is he who is sent greater than he who sent him. Amen. But the, the next verse is so amazing to me. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. Yeah. So we're blessed. By reminding somebody else, by passing on the exologio. Yeah. We remind our friends and our fellow believers to what they are in Christ, and that blesses them, but in turn, it blesses us. It Amen. reminds us of who we are. Amen. Amen. And and so, yeah, that's that's exactly and see that's that's the that's the assurance we have and that's the assurance he wants us to give to others. Yes. But you see, who was it that said it earlier? You can't. Was it you that said you yeah. can't? You can't yeah. give what you don't have. And so let the hope, let 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 the, your let your bridegroom stand before you and remind you of who you that you're just exactly like he is. Amen. I'm telling you, there's great power that can come out of this. Amen. Uh, great, tremendous power because he sums it up uh, after that verse about for this reason the man shall leave his father and mother. Look what he says. He, he, he takes that verse out of Genesis and he says, This is a great mystery. Yes. The great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Amen. See, I'm telling you, this that was that was about Christ and the church. All the way back there in Genesis 2. Amen. It was about Christ and the church because that was again the purpose and destiny of mankind being brought into this world. Mm -hmm. the, the, to us being joined to him. As the bride of Christ, as the as the body of Christ, a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or anything. Amen. 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 Let Him reassure you this morning. Let it, Let Him speak and Amen. sanctify you with the washing of the Word. Uh, let's go ahead, Mark. We can go ahead and take the pass out. Amen. 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 Uh, if those of you at home, if you have an opportunity. Uh, like to partake of communion with us, we'd love to have you join in your homes. Uh, but I love that, I love the illustration of, of co ownership. I am my beloved's, and he is mine. I'm telling you, this, this will, this will, the truth will make you free. Thank you. Uh, and it'll also, because it's about him and it's his, it's, it's the, the Holy Spirit reminding you about, see, again, it's no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. And I'm living by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So his faith begins to rise up in us as, as we hear the truth. Amen? Amen? It's his faith that begins to arise. If I'm talking about me, I'm trying to encourage my faith to arise. But I want his faith to arise. Amen? What were you going to say, Kim? I'm just seeing something funny. Like, you know, sometimes when you're, like, your hair's a mess and you're in your pajamas yeah. and someone comes over, they got full-on makeup, they're dressed to the oh, hill, you know? Really and you, <laughs> <laughs> you come into their presence and you feel kind of yucky, you know? That's kind of how we feel sometimes. But that's so inaccurate. Today is just such a good description of how Jesus is saying, you're just as good looking as I am. You look just as good as me. You just, You'd never you're look just better. as dressed as me in the robe of righteousness. Amen. 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 You're, yeah. you're, just like Adam said to Eve. I love that. It's just, she's just exactly like me. I love that. I love that. And Jesus is saying this morning to you, you're just exactly like me. First the natural, then the spiritual. Amen. Love the scripture says we're blameless. Yes. In other words, we're without blame. And uh, that's why I think so many people have trouble receiving it because they say, but I sin. Yes. But it doesn't say you're sinless. It but says you're blameless. Yes. And that's because he took. And that's because, thank you. <laughs> that's the, and that's the key is in this becoming one yeah. and being joined. We humble ourselves to receiving that Jesus mm -hmm took the blame. Amen. He took the sin. He took the blame. And when we join with him, we take that purity. Amen. 
And so in becoming one, we become washed, we become one like him. But that's that's why we're blameless. Amen. Not because we never sin. Amen. But because we are now without blemish, without blame. We will never be reproached. We will never be blamed because we became one with him. He took the reproach. He took the blame. Amen. And we so humble ourselves to receive yeah. from him. To become one with him Amen. and Amen. take his purity. I'll tell you what, you know, you want to you want to get encouraged in this, read the Song of Solomon this week. Go back and read it. Because it's it's the same thing it's the same thing about who's washing their feet because it's the see the, the bride has a she's saying that she has a dream of separation. You know, she says, "Oh, I'm I'm dirty. I'm, I don't look. Right. I, I look." And, she, and and he says, "The beloved spoke and said to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Uh, oh, my dove in the, in the cleft so let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. You know, let, he wants us wow. to respond to his, the voice of the bridegroom. Wants to hear the voice of the bride say the same thing. It's the voice saying, "Come." You know. We need to see ourselves as Amen. He sees us. Yeah. And you know, chapter four, verse seven: "You are all fair, my love." Yeah, that's right. And there's no spot in you. That's right. Amen. No spot. Amen. And so, when we're conscious of feeling dirty, it makes us want to pull back a little bit because we don't want Him to see any dirt, right? Yeah. That's but the right. truth is, when we when we receive the washing of this word, when we receive the truth that he has cleansed us, it'll make us come freely to him. We have nothing to hide, Absolutely. nothing to be ashamed of, even if I forgot to put my deodorant on this morning, <laughs> which I did. She asked me. <laughs> she, she leaned over and she said, do I smell? And I said, no, you smell, you smell wonderful. Because <laughs> you're but, all glorious with him. See, I'm, I'm not going to come close because I forgot. Right? Really, but, I said not yet. So. Not yet. I said not yet. No, but the truth is, when, we, when we're when we cleansed by him, it, we have nothing to hide. We Amen. don't need to stay aloof. We come yeah. close and we're intimate with him. Like that verse that says, we don't draw back. We don't, we don't draw, draw back. back. No. Amen. Uh, Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. And he brought me to the banqueting table. Amen. And his banner over me is love. love. Amen. Yeah. Lord, thank you. Thank you that, that we have been able to be born again and that we are bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. That when we're one spirit with you because you brought, you brought us to your banqueting table and you allowed us to eat your flesh and to drink your blood so that we could have life in ourselves because of you. We thank you that this banner over us now is your love for us, and that can never be changed. We, yeah. we have a relationship where we are co-owners with one another, and we're just so thankful for the reality of this spiritual union that we have with you, this mystery, this great mystery that Paul gave us revelation about. And we thank you. We, we stand in this place, place of perfection and holiness without spot, without wrinkle, uh, and we just we hear your voice, the voice of the bridegroom, and we resound back to you in agreement with you concerning us. And therefore, as a result, we speak the same thing to one another. We love because you first loved us. Amen. And so, Lord, we thank you for your body that was broken. We thank you for the life that your body being broken is brought into our broken bodies to make them whole. I couldn't say that again if I tried. But, Lord, thank you for giving me that word. And Lord, we, so we, as we partake of this, Lord, we're, we're partaking of, the, of what you did in exchange for these broken bodies to bring them back into wholeness again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, this new covenant, what can we say but to, to be thankful for this, the blood of the new covenant? that puts us in this perfect, whole, permanent relationship with you forever and ever. And that, that this covenant can never be broken because we're no longer, we're not responsible for this one, you were. And so it all, this gov the government of this covenant rests upon your shoulders. Yeah. And it says of the increase of that government, there should be no end. So we thank you, Lord, that there's no end to this new covenant relationship. It's glory to glory. Amen.
grace to grace and faith to faith. Amen. We thank you for it this morning, for the revelation of this mystery called the gospel. Thank you, Lord, for redeeming us by your blood. In Jesus' name. Just again, reminder. We just, I just go away this morning and, and continue to. And that's why, you know, that's why Jesus said, you know, it, or Paul said, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, or being changed into the very same image. The more we stand and see, we see ourselves in the mirror. We're seeing Christ in us. The more we're, we're changed. Into the, not that we are not already, that's who we are, but the change in our mind being renewed to that reality. Amen. And uh, so just be uh, be mindful of the voice of the bridegroom today. Let him continually keep you cleansed. Uh, and we won't see you next week, but we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, and uh, to Mary, uh, go Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs>